It's Chris here from IFL TV MTK Global, and I am here with Craig O'Brien. Welcome, yep. Craig. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Craig, we're down today at Ireland's last man standing at the press conference here in the Dublin Commerce Centre. Can you tell me a wee bit more about how you've got involved with the Ireland's last man standing? Well, obviously, the lads that are running in are Red Corner Promotions and Sesson Promotions, and they have a lot of Irish box, so we box in the last Red Corner Promotion show. So it's actually between middleweights and I think it's super middleweights, the show is. So I was always invited down to have a look and see what it's about. It got announced tonight, it's going on the tour in March, which is a big thing for Ireland. It's like a last man standing for Irish fighter. Plus it's going to be on traditional TV, so it'll be on national TV in Ireland, which is great for Irish boxers, a friend who's going to be on it. So, yeah, basically, I'm down to see what it's about. Big Joe Egan down here, Danny Lee down here, uh, good lot of boxers and uh, celebrity type fellas down here, so, yeah, it's good. Uh, for yourself within uh, the middleweight division, you're the current b Celtic middleweight champion. Light middleweight. Light middleweight champion. Yeah. Uh, 6 and 0. That's right, yeah. And last week you were actually at a reception with the Lord Mayor of Dublin. Yeah, Can so tell we, me a bit more about that. Yeah, we, we, we got a mayor as well. When I was in Daily Mount, I followed Bohemian's football club. I was in Daily Mount with the belt at half time, and the, Dublin, the Lord Mayor of Dublin was there. And we had a yap, and we got invited to a reception at his, the Lord Mayor's house. So we went over there, and the night it was uh, last week, last Saturday, and we went out there. It was a good night overall. He, then he certificate saying well done on personal life and plus the boxing and brought friends and family and a few celebrities down there and free drink and all the money so it turned out well. So following within that division, um, it's going to be roughly around light middleweight, 155 up to 165 pounds for this Ireland last man. Um, who would you like to see on the bill and who do you think would be the most exciting within our league? Yeah, well listen, listen this, it, it's eight fighters in total and I, I, I know I'm at the way, I don't know whether I'll go on or I'll fight on the undercard, it'll be, it'll be one or the other, but my gym mate, uh, Bernard Rowe, he'll be on it, he's a phenomenal talent. talent. Uh, there's lots of things, Darren Crowe's with Assassin's a possibility, he'll go on it, is, uh, I think McDonough, JJ McDonough, if he gets down to the way, he'll go on it, the boys up north, there's, there's lots of talent that will be there, and on the night I reckon uh, it'll be a great show to turn out, and again with the telly being on, it's great exposure for all the boys, all, all of us, you know, because it's been a while since we had a box on telly in Ireland, back, you know, back when we were done there, so. Yeah. Terrestrial television is an integral part of uh, boxing in Ireland, and it's something that has been lacking over the last 10 to 15 years, and uh, something that needs to be brought back uh, here for Ireland's last man. Um, but the advancement of Irish boxing itself in the last year with likes of Carl Frampton, Katie Taylor, Ram Burnett, uh, just to name a few, um, do you see the, this competition itself developing and taking Irish boxing to a new level? Yeah, well, that, 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 that'll be the plan for Irish boxers, that's the hope, and for the, obviously the promoters, that, that, that's the whole ball. So, so I, I asked them, was like a, a one fight deal, so they're trying to secure it over a period of one or two years, so it'll be consistent. So it's not just going to be one fight on the telly, and that's the end of it. So if they get it consistent, we could build something where, if you look at Bernard Dunn, if you go back to his days, he started in the stadium, which was 2,000, and when he finished up, he was fighting in the three arena, which is like eight or 9,000. But if you look at the likes of Frampton and Taylor, having the back of the Box Nation and the back of the uh, Sky Sports, it's a massive help to all boxers, you know, so hopefully it, it, it comes good for Ireland. Yeah, the assistance and the help that you were talking about, that's basically at the professional level. Uh, Kaz was saying inside, that the winner of this will receive 25,000 euro plus that additional 5,000 euro uh, enticement to the winner's amateur club who they developed from. Uh, do you see that this format running on a uh, three month basis over a three year period really uh, putting a footfall down for amateur boxing to put the money into those to allow the grassroots of boxing to develop which is it's super for any boxer to win it and plus to get that bit extra to give to the to the amateur clubs that's where it all starts from that's where we start that's where all these professional boxers well 80 percent of them as a kid came through as amateur so it's brilliant if you look at Ireland we have, we have great talent in the amateur ranks if you look at the olympics we always medal so it, it, it's brilliant to give back to grassroots boxing to where it all started to to the club where you started from so obviously winning the 25 grand is like super and getting 
the five man on it. It's an out of bounds, isn't it? To go to go to the to, to the kids, whether it be for for gym gear, for bags, for anything, or for for a trip to them, whether it be America for experience or anywhere, it's, it's it's brilliant. It's absolutely super, yeah. If you were to fight within the tournament itself, rather than just the undercard, yeah. which boxer in the Irish division would you love to come up against? Yeah, man, that got an name drop, you know what I mean? You never know. If, if, if it's not in the tournament, I might come up against them on the undercard anyway. So listen, again, we, we don't exactly know who's in it, but when it does get announced, the eight names will come out. And listen, you don't know who you, you, you pick or choose, or they pick them, and whoever you're up against, you're up against, isn't it? That's true. Um, we've got uh, the upcoming fight for likes of Gary Spike Sullivan yeah. in Quebec. How do you see that one panning out and do you think that that's something to look towards the future of Gary potentially fighting on Aaron's last man maybe in a year or two years time? Yeah, I, I think he's a fair bit away from that yet, but I, I, I do know, obviously Spike's with Jimmy so, and he's with Spire everybody, you know what I mean? So we, we take home, so we, so we train every day to get on. It's the best I've seen him at the moment, and he's been on it not just from the last month, the start of the year he's been on, he's in tremendous shape. And he's a great chance of winning that fight out in uh, Canada, obviously, on the undercard of the Billy Joe fight. So he's putting the graft in, and hopefully, if Spike gets this fight winning, it'll come back big for Ireland as well. Because I think then after that, there's possibility to get a more title fight, whether it be in Boston or in Canada, again, depending on the winner. But yeah, it's a massive opportunity for Spike, and the way he's looking at the gym, I really think he's got a business. You're talking about uh, the advancement within the gym for the likes of Spike. Uh, you've now got the re-emergence of Tyson Fury coming back out of semi-retirement. Uh, how do you see Tyson developing over the next few months throughout 2018? And do you think he'll get back to an elite level yeah. uh, for fighting for top world titles? Well, listen, when, when you say elite level, he's still there, isn't he? Obviously, the bit of weight is killing him at the moment. Like, please God, he gets back in and he does it. I've been watching his Instagram. He's, he's in Ricky Hatch at the moment, doing pad work and messing the bell. And believe it or not, he actually still looks sharp, very sharp. His movement's very good. So I do believe he's beat the best, hadn't he? He's beat, he's beat the man to beat everyone. He's beat Klitschko, so Rim Magazine. He's, beat, he's, he's the best. If, if if he wouldn't have be if he wouldn't have beat Klitschko, all these boys wouldn't be world champions nowadays. So I, I I do believe Danny was the best in the world, and I still believe now he's the best in the world. So hopefully he can get that weight down, get a fight in the start of the year, and push on again then in uh, the heavyweight division because he's a great character for the boxing. So it's good to have him. And uh, just going off on a tangent, uh, what is your current view of Amir Khan appearing on *I'm a Celebrity*? But he's actually amazed at me because I, I, I watched the program and it's funny, you picked this day to snake up to an eye and he ran scared and I couldn't stop laughing. But How do you think you would cope yourself in there around the snakes and the rotary grubs? Yeah, well I watched it with my girlfriend, she's like, you'll be the same, but being a man, I like that, I do what I do, but when you're there, it's a different story. But listen, he's good for TV, you know what I mean? Like, oh, what a lovely to see him fight Brooke, I think that will happen next year, but again, it's entertaining, so it's good. Okay, Greg, uh, awesome, pleased to meet you and it's great speaking to you here on IFLP now. Come on, thanks a million, boys.